Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 15 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in lecture number 3, I began with you the discussion of the various ways of summarizing and describing data. And for the most part, our discussion pertained to the analysis of a univariate situation. That is, we talked about the central tendency, the dispersion, the skewness, and the kurtosis of one single variable. But students, I'm sure that you will agree that in many, many situations, our interest is not in just one single variable but we are interested in studying situations where a number of variables are related with each other. For example, if you consider the case of the yield of a crop, you will agree that the yield depends on so many factors, the fertility of the soil, the amount of rainfall, the quantity of the fertilizer used, and other variables. So, is hawale se, aaj hum jis mauzu pe discussion karenge, that is regression and correlation. A very, very important area of statistics and we will be discussing the simplest situation, that of simple linear regression and correlation, where we develop and establish the relationship between two variables only. All right. Let us begin this interesting topic by picking up an example. An important concern for any pharmaceutical company producing drugs is to determine how a particular drug will affect one's perception or general awareness. Suppose one such company wants to establish a relationship between the percentage of a particular drug in the bloodstream and the length of time it takes to respond to a stimulus. As you know, some drugs are like that, which have side effects. So, here is some drugs that are like that, which is because of drowsiness and drowsiness. And this study is very interesting. कि, for example, अगर आप उसको prick करें, उसको switch भोएं, तो कितने, कितना time लगता है to respond to, to this um, prick. और इसी लिए जो, जैसा कि अब आप देखेंगे screen पे, जो data है regarding the reaction time, that is in milliseconds. Suppose that the company administers this drug on five particular patients and obtains the following information. Subject A, B, C, D and E, percentage of drug in the bloodstream, 1, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% and 5%. Or iske against jo reaction time hai to respond to a particular stimulus that is 1, 1, 2, 2, and four milliseconds. Students, as you will agree, in this example, the reaction time is that variable which depends on the variable percentage of drug in the bloodstream. So, we say that reaction time is the dependent variable and we denote it by Y. And percentage of drug in the bloodstream is the independent variable and we denote it by x. In order to determine the nature of the relationship between the dependent variable y and the independent variable x, students, the very first step is to draw the scatter diagram. Ab scatter diagram se meri kya murad hai? It's a very, very simple diagram. You take the independent variable x along the x-axis and the dependent variable y along the y-axis and you simply plot all those ordered pairs that you have 
in the form of points on the graph paper. So, going back to the example that I just discussed, the scatter diagram will be of the form that you now see on the screen. The point to understand is that for the subject A, the ordered pair x comma y is equal to 1 comma 1. And hence, our first point on the graph paper will have abscissa equal to 1 and ordinate also equal to 1. For subject B, the ordered pair and the point is 2, 1. For subject C, it is 3, 2. For subject D, we have 4, 2. And last but not the least, for subject E, the point is 5, 4. Students, the scatter diagram is a very, very useful tool to judge the nature of the relationship between x and y. Abhi jo diagram aapne dekha, usme aapne ye note kiya hoga that there is an up upward trend. And what do I mean by upward trend? It means that as x increases, y also increases. And this is exactly what you just saw. Of course, you will say that the points were up and down. But if you look carefully, you can see a linear trend uh, in this data. And in the figure that you now see on the screen, this fact is depicted. Students, why is it that all those points that you saw on the graph, they are not all lying on the straight line? This is a very, very fundamental point. And you must realize that in the sociological sciences, psychology, sociology, economics, and many other social sciences, you will 95 or 99 percent of the time not have an exact linear relationship. But you will be able to judge that overall um, your data follows a linear pattern. Sometimes it will be linear, more, many times it will be linear, and sometimes it may be parabolic, it may be like a curve, and sometimes you will have some other patterns. But the, this point, why is it that they are, the points are not all lying on that mathematical curve or line? I would like to explain this to you with the help of an example. Consider the case of uh, a few firms who are spending a certain amount on research and development, R&D. If you in firms' ka data lein of R&D and the profit margin, um, and if the R&D expenditure is exactly the same, you will find that still the profit margin will, will be different. This is that these firms are operating under different conditions. The efficiency of the firm, the goods being produced in the market, the firm's share in the market, all these things affect the profit margin of the firm. So, although the R&D expenditure was exactly the same for these few firms, their profit margins are different. So, this is exactly the point that I was conveying earlier. For one single value of x, you will have different values of y. If you are x jo hai, wo aap khud fix kar rahe hai, even then the y variable is a random variable. Or ye jo baat maine aap se aakhir mein kahi, this points to a very important mathematical point with reference to regression analysis. And that is that your x variable should be a non-random variable, whereas your y variable will be a random variable. Aye, usi example pe vapis chalte hain, jiska scatter diagram aapne thodi der pehle screen pe dekha. Students, agar hum ye keh rahe hain ke this um, diagram follows an overall linear pattern, then obviously our objective will be to find the equation of this line that passes through this diagram. I, I'm sure that um, all of you know the 
basic equation for a straight line and that is y is equal to mx plus c where m represents the slope of the line and c represents the y intercept. If we um, rename the values c and m as a and b, the equation becomes y is equal to a plus bx. By the slope of the line, we mean the tangent of the angle theta, where theta is the angle between the line and the horizontal axis. And by the y-intercept, we mean the distance between the origin and the point where my line intersects the y-axis. Students, ab ek bohat hi important baat dekhne ki hai. Aur wo ye hai ki through the same scatter diagram, we can have many lines. As you now see on the screen, for the one scatter diagram, which had only five points in the example that we considered in the beginning, you can have one, two, three, and many lines passing through it, and all of them are more or less reflecting the linear relationship that exists between x and y. So, then the question is that we select which line we want to select as the one which best represents this particular data set. Students, for this purpose, we use a method called the method of least squares. And the line that we will obtain by this method will be called the regression line of y on x. And this entire procedure will be called simple linear regression. Ab ye method of least squares se kya murade? Is silsle mein, uh, the first thing to note is that we would like to draw a line which is passing through the points, yani kuch points line ke upar ho, kuch points line se niche ho. It should be a kind of an average line. Tabhi hame intuitively ye mehsoos hoga ke as if this is a good representative of this data. Is point ko um, un distances ke hawale se dekhye jo exist karenge between any individual data point and the line. As you now see on the screen, some points are above the line and some below and you have vertical distances between all these points and the corresponding points on the line. The important point is that if my line is passing through the point x bar comma y bar, that is, if my line is passing through the mean point of the data, then the sum of the positive and negative deviations will come out to be zero. But the problem is that, as I indicated earlier, there can be many lines for which the sum of the deviations of the actual y values and the corresponding y values obtained from the line is zero. So, ye criterion kafi nahi hai is baat ke liye ke hum konsi line pick karein. Aisi to kai line hai jo sab ki sab x bar, y bar ke through pass kar rahi hai aur unke angle thoda thoda mukhtalif hai lekin wo sab is criterion ko meet kar rahi hai that the sum of the deviations of the observations from the fitted line is zero. So, we need another criterion to get the best fitting line. And as I said earlier, this is the method of least squares. What we do is that we square each and every one of these deviations before we find their sum. And students, what we find is that the sum of the squares of the deviations of the actual data points from the line, that will be minimum for one particular line and that line is called 
द बेस्ट फिटिंग लाइन ये बात आप अब स्क्रीन पर जो डायग्राम्स देखेंगे उससे वाजे हो जाएगी इन द फर्स्ट डायग्राम यू नोट दैट फॉर द फोर पॉइंट्स ए बी सी एंड डी ऑफ द स्कैटर डायग्राम द लाइन दैट पास थ्रू दैम इन द डायरेक्शन दैट यू नाउ सी जेनरेट्स टू स्क्वेयर विच आर क्वाइट लार्ज वेर एज टू आर नॉट दैट लार्ज बट वेन वी फाइंड द सम ऑफ दीज फोर स्क्वेयर ऑब्वियसली दैट विल बी क्वाइट अ लार्ज क्वान्टिटी नाउ इफ आई रोटेट द लाइन अराउंड द पॉइंट एक्स बार कॉमा वाई बार आई गेट अ न्यू पोजिशन एंड इन दिस न्यू पोजिशन स्टूडेंट्स यू फाइंड दैट द एरियाज ऑफ द स्क्वेयर आर नॉट एज लार्ज एज बिफोर स्टूडेंट्स इस एक्सप्लेनेशन से आप पे ये वाजे हो गया होगा कि अगरचे पॉइंट्स ए बी सी और डी एग्जैक्टली उसी जगह पर रहेंगे बट इफ यू रोटेट योर लाइन दे विल बी वन पोजिशन वेयर द सम ऑफ द स्क्वेयर विल बी मिनिमम एंड दिस इज एग्जैक्टली द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लीस्ट स्क्वेयर तो अब सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि वो जो हमने रोटेट करना है कि जिसके जरिए वो पोजिशन आ जाए कि जहाँ पे वो स्क्वेयर बहुत ही छोटे हो जाए यानी मिनिमम सम अचीव हो जाए हाउ विल बी फाइंड एग्जैक्ट एग्जैक्टली दैट पर्टिकुलर एंगल स्टूडेंट्स इसके लिए ऑफकोर्स वी हैव टू रिजॉर्ट टू मैथमेटिकल टेक्निक्स एंड वी विल बी टेकिंग द डेरेवेटिव ऑफ अ सर्टन क्वान्टिटी इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव दैट दोज पर्टिकुलर इक्वेजन दैट विल यील्ड दिस बेस्ट फिटिंग लाइन लेकिन इस कोर्स में आई विल नॉट बी डिस्कसिंग एनी ऑफ द डेरीवेशन आई विल सिंपली गिव यू दोज इक्वेजन विच आर द रिजल्ट ऑफ दीज डेरीवेशन एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द टू इक्वेजन विच इनेबल यू टू ऑप्टेन द बेस्ट फिटिंग लाइन आर सिगमा वाई इज इक्वल टू एन ए प्लस बी सिगमा एक्स एंड सिगमा एक्स वाई इक्वल टू ए सिगमा एक्स प्लस बी सिगमा एक्स स्क्वेयर स्टूडेंट्स दीज टू इक्वेजन आर कॉल्ड नॉर्मल इक्वेजन बट प्लीज रिमेंबर कि यहाँ पे ये जो लफ्ज नॉर्मल मैंने कहा दिस हैज नथिंग टू डू विद द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन that i mentioned in an earlier lecture or which i will mention in detail when we do continuous probability distributions ye jo do normal equations hain inhe hum simultaneously solve karenge in order to find the values of a and b and these are exactly the two values that you need in order to find uh, to determine your line which is the best fitting line to your data Uh, the point to understand is that in these two equations the only two unknowns are a and b baki to sari jo quantities hain they will be available to you after all when you have a set of bivariate data you already have a column of x and a column of y and you can multiply the x column with the y column to obtain the xy column or you can square the x column to obtain the x square column and once you have all these columns you will be able to find sigma x sigma y sigma x square and sigma xy so in equation o mein the only two unknown quantities are a and b and when we solve these equations simultaneously and obtain a and b we will have determined that line which is the best fitting line to our data let us apply all these points to the same example that we were discussing earlier as you see on the screen the sum of the x column is 15 sigma y is equal to 10 sigma x square comes out to be 55 and sigma xy is equal to 37 substituting these values 
in the two normal equations we obtain 10 is equal to 5a plus 15b and 37 is equal to 15a plus 55b. You noticed that I wrote 5a because n is equal to 5. n represents the total number of ordered pairs that you have and in this particular example as you know we were talking about five patients um, on whom we had administered various percentages of the drug. Solving the two equations simultaneously b comes out to be 0 0.7 and a is equal to minus 0 0.1. Hence our equation of our best fitting line comes out to be y hat is equal to minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7 x. Aapne note kiya that a hat has been placed on top of the y and students this is to differentiate between the actual y values pertaining to your data points and the y values that you obtain from the line corresponding to exactly the same x value. Chaliye, line to humne fit kar li. But I am sure that you must be thinking what is the purpose of fitting this line and going through all these lengthy calculations. Students, this line is, uh, plays a very important role in estimation and prediction. For example, in this um, example that we are just considering, suppose that we are interested in determining what will be the reaction time of a patient who has 4.33% of the drug in his bloodstream. Jo hamara original data hai, wo to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 percent ke against hume information de raha hai. Lekin hum ab interested hai ki ye pata kare ki agar 4.33 percent uh, drug hoes ki blood stream mein, phir uska reaction time to the stimulus kitna hoga. As you now see on the screen, all we have to do is to put x equal to 4.33 in our equation of the line and doing so y hat comes out to be 2.931. So you have noticed that through this process of regression we have been able to estimate that a patient having 4.33 percent of a particular drug in his bloodstream will take 2.9 milliseconds to react to that particular stimulus. Students, is uh, pure regression analysis ke andar uh, or is estimation procedure mein jo maine abhi aap ke saath share kiya, ek point bada important hai aur wo ye hai ke one should be careful in the estimation process that your y, that your x value corresponding to which you want to find the estimated y value, that x value should be within the range of the x values which are available to you. Um, in the example that we are considering at this point, aap jante hain ki x values jo available hain, wo hain 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Agar maine 4.33 ke liye y estimate karna hai, to th that is all right. Agar mein 5.5 x k against y estimate kar loon, to wo bhi qabil e qabool hoga. But students, if I estimate y corresponding to x equal to 10 in this example, that will not be very wise. Vaja kya hai? Vaja ye ke 10 is so far away from the highest x value that is available to me, that there is no guarantee that the, the linear pattern that we have established in this um, example for the values 1 to 5, that same pattern will prevail all the way up to x equal to 10. As you now see on the screen, it is possible that it becomes a curve rather than a straight line. And if you use the equation of the straight line to estimate the y value for an x value which is considerably far from the available 
x values, then your estimated value may be quite incorrect. All right, now that you have understood the basic uh, technique of regression, students, I want to draw your attention to another point. Abhi tak humne jitni discussion ki, we assumed that y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. Yani, jab hum y ko estimate karna chahe from x, then we will be applying the equations that you just saw. But in some situations, we may be interested in estimating the x variable from y. Or aap ye soch sakte hain ke isi equation ko hum utilize kar lenge to find x corresponding to any particular value of y. Kyunke aap x ko is side pe le aye, y ko is side pe le aye. And you can find an equation so that you have y is, uh, I'm sorry, x is equal to something in terms of y. Uske andar y ki value put kare or x a jayega. But students, this is not the thing to go for. And the very important point is that if you want to regress, if you want to estimate x from y, then you should regress x on y. And in this situation, um, you will interchange the roles of x and y in your normal equations. I would like to encourage you to work on this problem on your own and to practice with one or two problems numerically. Students, at this point, I would like to discuss with you another important concept, and that is the concept of the standard error of estimate. Now, the point is that we have fitted a line and some points are above the line and some points are below the line. So, hum is baat mein bhi to interested hai na, ke what is the degree to which they are scattering from the line? Kya hamare points line ke bhot nazdeek hai? Ya they are scattering away from it? And to measure this, we would like to compute what is called the standard deviation of regression or the standard error of estimate. As you now see on the screen, the standard error of estimate is defined as the positive square root of sigma y minus y hat whole square divided by n minus 2, where y denotes an observed value and y hat denotes the corresponding value obtained from the least squares line. Students, is formula ke structure se aapne recognize kar liya hoga ke yahan bhi basic concept wohi standard deviation wala concept hai. We are uh, summing the squares of the deviations of the y values from the estimated y values, the ones that we obtain from the line. Lekin, this formula is a bit cumbersome to apply because in order to apply this, first we will have to find all the y hat values corresponding to all the x values that are av available to us and that will be a bit cumbersome. So, as you now see on the screen, the standard error of estimate denoted by s y dot x is equal to the square root of the quantity sigma y square minus a sigma y minus b sigma x y whole divided by n minus 2. Ye jo notation hai s y dot x, students, it is not very difficult to understand. If we are regressing y on x, we will write s y dot x. And if we are regressing x on y, we will write s x dot y. Or aye, ab hum is uh, concept ko apply karte hai on the same example that we have been considering. As you now see on the screen, the column of y square has been added to the four columns that we already had, and the sum of the y square column is 26. 
the values of a and b have already been found and now substituting all these quantities in the formula of s y dot x the standard error of estimate for this particular problem comes out to be 0 0.61. Ab sawal ye peda hota hai ke how will we interpret this value of s y dot x. The point here is students that s y dot x lies between 0 and s y where s y represents the standard deviation of the y values. Now if our s y dot x is close to 0 it means that those data points are not deviating very far from the line that dispersion is less and we can say that our line is a good representative of those data points. But if our s y dot x is large and if it is close to the upper limit s y then it means that the data points are deviating uh, from the line and the line is not very reliable for estimation purposes. In this example um, s y the ordinary standard deviation of our y values comes out to be 1.10 and if we compare the s y dot x value 0 0.61 with the s y value 1.10 students we find that uh, 0 0.61 is not extremely small uh, compared with this upper limit and hence we conclude that in this particular example um, there is a certain amount of dispersion of the values uh, around the line and that dispersion is not extremely insignificant and hence this line is not extremely reliable for estimation purposes. Regression ke baare mein toh humne bohat detail mein baat ki. The next concept which is very important and closely related to the concept of regression is the concept of correlation. As you now see on the screen, the correlation is a measure of the strength or the degree of the relationship that exists between two random variables. Aapne note kiya ke yaha maine kaha ke it is the strength of the relationship between two random variables and this is a mathematical point that whereas in regression analysis um, y is a random variable but x is a non-random variable in correlation analysis um, they are both random variables. For example if you want to determine the strength of the relationship between the heights and weights of young children um, you will realize that both height and weight will be regarded as random variables. Obviously, we would like to have a numerical formula to measure this strength of the relationship that exists between two variables. As you now see on the screen, the correlation coefficient is defined as covariance of x and y divided by the standard deviation of x into the standard deviation of y. Covariance of x and y is defined as sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar over n and it is a measure of the degree to which two variables vary together and that is why we have the term covariance. The shortcut formula for the Pearson's coefficient of correlation is sigma x y minus sigma x sigma y over n and this entire quantity divided by the square root of sigma x square minus sigma x whole square over n into sigma y square minus sigma y whole square over n. Let us apply this concept to an example. Suppose that the principal of a school is interested in ascertaining the correlation between marks in mathematics and marks in statistics and he collects data for 9 students and the marks in mathematics are 5, 12, 14 
and so on, whereas the marks in statistics for the same students are 11, 16, 15 and so on. In order to compute the correlation coefficient, we construct the columns of x square, y square and xy and we obtain all the relevant sums and substituting them in the formula for r, our answer comes out to be 0 0.88. To interpret this result, students, the first thing to understand is that r is a quantity that lies between minus 1 and 1. In case of a direct or positive correlation between two variables, r lies between 0 and 1. But in case of a, of a negative or indirect correlation between two variables, it lies between 0 and minus 1. When I say indirect or negative relationship, I mean that as one variable increases, the other decreases. For example, as the temperature of the city rises, the sale of woolen sweaters declines. Essay situation may r will lie between 0 and minus 1, whereas in case of direct relationship, for example, as the temperature of the city rises, the sale of ice cream rises, so they are varying in the same direction. In such a situation, r will lie between 0 and 1. The stronger is the relationship between x and y. Graphically, the closer my points are to an upward going line, the closer my r will be to 1. So, in this example, if r is equal to 0 0.88 or approximately 0 0.9 students, you will appreciate that this means that indeed there is a very strong positive linear correlation between the marks in mathematics and the marks in statistics. Isi tara, agar kisi or problem mein, mera answer r equal to 0, minus 0 0.9 ya minus 0 0.8 hota, to that would have meant that there is a very strong negative linear correlation between x and y. The closer my r is to 0, students, the weaker is the correlation between x and y. And if r is exactly equal to 0, that means that there is absolutely no correlation. Students, in today's lecture, I have discussed with you a few concepts concerning regression and correlation and I have tried to convey to you the basic philosophy of this area but believe me that we have done just the very beginning of a very vast and important area of statistics. I would like to encourage you to um, study this on your own and to go on to study uh, not just simple correlation and regression, but a little bit about multiple correlation and regression, where we try to study the relationship between not just two, but three or more variables. Aaj hamare course ka pandharma lecture tha, and today we have uh, completed the discussion of the first part of this course, and that is descriptive statistics. In all these um, lectures that we have had during the past weeks, you have noted that we have learned different ways of describing that data that you have collected on sample basis. The next 15 lectures will be devoted to probability theory, the most important theory which will be the foundation for statistical inference. Until next time, my best wishes to you and Allah Hafiz.